Uh, Ian, we got we got voicemails. Oh, of course. How do you, how do you access the? Uh... Don't know. That's that's uh, that's not it's not my job description. That's yours. Oh, it's a job description. It's part of the job description. Anchor.fm slash the CU podcast. You can leave us a voicemail. Try to keep it short and sweet. It's always nicer to get through more of these. And uh, here's the first one. What's up, Pat? What's up, Ian? This is uh, Josh from Decatur, Illinois, with you guys talking about the Amico a lot and the lack of uh, physical media. Physical product. I just wondered if you really thought the physical media was even still alive. I think it died with the Wii and the PS2 because it can be manipulated so much from the other end that, I mean, what is it really? It will. What we have as physical media will always rely on what they will allow it to be through their consoles. And there's so much computerization and internet injected into the console. I mean, what's really on the Switch cartridge? What do you guys think? Keep up the good work. Love the show. Later. Um, I like physical media. I'm a record collector. I, I own almost I own very little digital music unless it's something I'm DJing with. Um, so I believe me, I, I see the appeal in physical media. Um, I think video game physical media, if it was truly physical media, would, yes, have. I, I think there's still a market for it. There's lots of people who don't have great Internet access. There's all the flyover states. Military. Uh, military. Physical media is important. But I agree with what you're saying. I think a lot of this collector stuff that has been hammering on physical media really comes down more to they want something i'm not saying all of them but i think people they, they conflate the importance of having physical media for access um with owning something to put on the shelf because we have gotten to the point with a lot of video games now that do get physical releases and i've said this um if the game needs to have day one updates to be you oh. know, uh, a, a, oh. a fairly a functioning, bug-free experience, then the physical media isn't really... W what's it doing? Um, and the Switch is an even worse example. Uh, it acts as a key, basically. Well, yeah. so on the Switch, there are lots of games that are on the, the cartridges, but what I hate is these collections. The Bioshock collection, um, Bayonetta... Well, Bayonetta 2 was technically just a standalone, but uh, the Mega Man collections, there's a lot of things on the... Um, switch where you buy it and you get one but not the other the other is attached to a download code so not only does that immediately kind of kill the resale value on just a short-term thinking of, of how physical media works because people would probably just go buy it new so they can get the other game on there um in terms of preservation you, you don't you don't get everything it's, it's just it's not there you're getting half a product so i i I, I do think the more, like you said, these games rely on a server somewhere else to feed them the final updates, to make them playable. Well, a game like Animal Crossing, uh, if you just look at Animal Crossing on the Switch as it launched, there was nothing in there. They constantly kept adding new content sure. through patches. You end up with a, a situation where physical media... Like I said, has, as it was supposed to be is great, but now you're just ending up with something for collectors to buy because it's not really everything on there. Unless it's like a limited run release and it's... it's this is Limited run is pretty good about it, and I'm not taking yeah. shots at limited run here, but even they can't foresee everything because yes. now the limited run physical release of Streets of Rage 4 doesn't have the DLC. It's, it's not a complete... Yeah. So, and I really... And like I said, I know limited run goes out of their way to wait and hope that they can get to the point where they don't need to do any that's of that. That's not their business model as much anymore they, they put this stuff out pretty early on some but they stuff. do put it out a bit quicker now yeah. and yeah you, they do they, they miss some of these updates they're generally going to be in better working condition than a day one release from ubisoft that's getting you know a, a 10 gig update when sure. you put it in but yeah we're, we're starting to see what the, the definition of physical media get a little slippery yeah but there is some positives because otherwise yeah you can't do you know the modern animal crossing if it was physical it'd be impossible to, 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 well, no, to, you, you could is the thing. <laughs> you'd have to connect. To there, there's less. There's less. You'd have there's to, less content in this game. Are right at, as it stands right now. There's less content in that game than in previous iterations. They could have fit everything on a card. You think they could have fit all the all the all the? They uh, could have put everything on that. All card. the different events that they do and yes. all that stuff. They could have fit all the because seasons. that was all stuff that was in on physical copies on the 3DS. Okay. Version. But then they can do this for years and years, though. You couldn't do that before. They could. Okay, we, what if we program something? Give me a full for game month? and then give me years and years. You've barely given me two. Okay, Ian. All right. Wow. All right. You don't. 
If you don't see the advantage, I, I think they'd be hard. I don't think there's an advantage to that. I mean, I, under, fly, I understand the advantage, but people are going to have to say goodbye to physical media at some point if this is how we want that. Well, this is, this is the only argument I'm going to make about it. It's obviously, yes, you can buy and sell the physical media a lot easier. So that's cool. And it is a key. Yes. I mean, at some point, it's, it's obviously we're at the point now that it's just accepted everyone has internet access. And yes, it's not everyone has great internet access. Even even in first world nations like ours, not everyone has great internet access, but that's just been become more and more acceptable. And I think what's going to happen is people are going to be like, I can't play that game because I can't do fifty. I can't do a day one, day zero, fifty gig patch. I just can't. You know, right. I just can't do that. You're going to have to wait or or send it to someone. You know what I mean? Have your friend mail you the fucking drive to load it on somehow. To, you know what I mean? Like that's going to have to probably happen before we get before it's like universal uh, fiber optic, which we'll, we'll get there eventually. It's going to be decades and decades maybe to get there to most parts of the world, but that's what we're going to probably do next. Cheese it's or cheese nips. Cheese it's. Thanks. They're both a square. Which one's a square? Nips is square. They're both square. I really appreciate that question. Okay. I feel very, very strongly about cheese it's over cheese nips. I think cheese nips are trash. Utter fucking dog L- trash. Wiser, le- le- less cheddar per square inch. They're craft. They don't taste as naturally cheesy as Cheez Its do. They don't have the fun flavors that Cheez Its do. Cheez It is really just like just about a perfect fucking snack. Okay. I like goldfish. Hey, Batnian. Big, big fan here. Now, I know that it causes Ian significant pain and probably shorts, shortens his lifespan, but I do love okay. when you use the soundboard. My question is where does the update? sound clip come from thank you what also tonight an update where does that come from ian that is unsolved mysteries that is the stack man robert stack uh on the unsolved mysteries show every week when they would do it they would the best some new ones the best true crime show ever by the way um then they would update you on previous ones so if the you know someone had been caught if the mystery sometimes been, that episode if the mystery had been solved sometimes like oh, they went back and re-edited them in for no for they re edited them in but like yeah no it was great they caught a lot their percentage was fairly high i'd say it's probably 30 40 percent yeah some episodes i watched there's an update in every segment there was or, a or re- reunited lo- reuniting loved ones where Ian doesn't like those for some reason where you know you meet someone after like 40 years and no it's not the reuniting loved ones stuff that i don't like it's the uh it's the Parents of kids who put their kids up for adoption hunting their kids down that I don't like. You don't, you don't like seeing that it happen, or you yeah, don't like I, it's just kind of weird. Like, like, like a lot of stuff happened, like in the depression, they couldn't afford to raise like three kids or four kids. I know people up. who are adopted and they would be horrified if that happened. You gave up your kid, don't, don't wow. hunt them down in the don't hunt them down in their adult life. And do that. Really? You don't think that some of those, those kids want to meet their real parents? Maybe they do, but I've it just, just happened with the like, Paralympian, the swimmer the, with, with, the, with the legs. She went and went to Russia and saw they had to give her up. I, I don't know. They're it, all it's, crying. It's, it's, it's unloading a lot. It, it's, it's going to bring up a lot of emotions in that person. I'm not saying that there are people out there who can't want that, but those always made me uncomfortable because watching them, the people that they found always looked like they were doing their best to be like, uh, I, I, this I, is I, great. I disagree with that, Ian. This there's, is awesome. A lot of times they're both crying. They're very... I've always felt that those segments came across as really forced. If they were forced, they wouldn't agree to have a crew there with them. Money. You know? They're not, they're not, you, think, you think Robert Sachs giving him a check in order to do a, a lost love reunion? Are you kidding me, Ian? Man. Wow. Ian's is cynical about that. I'm, I'm, I'm more of a... Wow. I thought I had the cold heart here. Don West here, and I'm calling in to tell you all about what is this thing? Atari Amiga. Okay, I have to stop it right here. <laughs> We have to make the decision now. Should we continue with this horrible Don West impression and continue on the rest of it? <laughs> you can continue. This sounds like it, a yes. guy trying to do a Hoboken impression, not Don West. <laughs> okay, well, do keep going. Okay, we're going to keep going. Calico Amigo, Compra El Amigo, Adios Mio, Act Now, Be Dallin. Doesn't sound like Don West. This thing will never come out, but it doesn't matter. Buy it now on FlexPay for $299.99, and I'll throw in a Mark McGuire rookie card. That's right, Mark McGuire rookie card. Jim Minton, Joya de Mente Diaz. That alone is worth more than this thing will ever be worth. B. Dillon, 
Me oh dialing people. That's and right. The, We're the, giving you money to take this thing. <laughs> if you the, flex pay it in the next five minutes, Tommy Tallarico will even deliver it and personally. Oh He's God. got nothing going on. I'm trust sweating. me. <laughs> I'm sweating I'm too. fucking sweating. <laughs> All right. Now that's it. Holy shit. Okay. <sighs> you had the phrases down. The phrases were down. Th that was a bad impression, Don West. It's not the best Don West. <sighs> not the best Don West I've heard. I think I Don know the West, person who did that, and I love them, but that's not a good Don, Don West. Don West is a southerner, not a guy moving furniture in Hoboken in, or in Jersey City. Like <laughs> okay? Sorry about that. Okay, God. Wow, that was... That sound, that, that sound, that felt, I feel like five minutes. That was long. That, that felt long. Hey, Pat and Ian. Jesus. Uh, this is Mark. been listening since the first episode. Fantastic podcast. But my question's mainly for Ian. Sorry, Pat. Um, I have a GameCube collection, and I'm thinking about selling it on eBay, and I'm just wondering if you think it's the right time, if I should wait a bit longer. I saw, like, Chibi Robo and stuff is up to, like, $200, some crazy nonsense, so just your thoughts on that. But keep up the good work, and can I be the resident board game snob of the podcast? Thank you very much. Sure. Uh, yeah, that's fine. You can do that. Uh, I, I do think it's probably... GameCube was at its hottest probably four months ago. Some of the prices have started to come down. The prices are still really high for a lot of stuff. Um, we've talked about this before. These pandemic prices are not going to just suddenly disappear. People sold and traded stuff for these values, and they're going to want those values to sure. stay. Um, so I guess what I'm saying is, if you really think about selling it, sell it now, because we're already seeing some of the prices dip. But I, yeah, I don't think there's really a better time. Ian, Patrick, Nathan, from Georgetown, Texas here. Hi, Nathan. So I hear you guys love peanut butter cups. It's the goat candy. Sorry. Besides Cadbury cream eggs. So do I. Good, Nathan. I have a recommendation. What is it, Nathan? You like Reese's peanut butter cups, but you're disappointed by that white chalky crap that's usually found on them? Mm -hmm. You are, Nathan. Mm -hmm. Trader Joe's dark chocolate peanut butter cups everyone keeps talking about these trader joe peanut butter cups they will be the best cups you ever put in your mouth i guarantee it see ya nathan i love the question nathan that was 36 seconds i could have been 10 <laughs> there was a lot of pauses there yeah but we give people a minute it's conversational it's fine um it allowed me to respond <laughs> uh, then he started talking. A couple again. other people have told me about the uh trader joe's uh peanut butter cups and have said they're fantastic so i really do need to try them okay I like oh, dark chocolate peanut butter cups are good. A lot of a lot of the stores have those. We'll go back to our uh, real quick. Go back to our Patreon question. Uh, good idea, poor execution. Oftentimes, the Reese's peanut butter cup. That is true. It's like wrestling. When it's great, it's the best thing. When it's bad, it's the worst yep. thing. Yep. And much like wrestling, yeah. every once in a while, I take chances on it, and I'm usually disappointed. But every once in a while, I'm very happy. It, it, it's, it, peanut butter cups are like pro wrestling. Yeah. <laughs> you're never happier than watching the best pro wrestling, but you're never more pissed off watching bad pro wrestling. Yeah. Um, next. Hey guys, Callus here. I was just wondering what both your opinions on chiptune was. And Ian, if you had any chiptune focused synthesizers in your rig, I recently just got a Twisted Electrons Mega FM, which has two Sega FM chips in it. Yeah, yeah. And a slider for each of the FM parameters. Well, he's making up words there, Ian. So, what do you think about chip tunes? He's not. It's very good. Uh, he's making up it's, stuff. It's a neat synth. Um, I, I like chip tune. I don't have any like super chip tune focused uh, synths in my collection, like actual boutique synths. But I do have a number of Game Boys that are modded to work uh, to uh, Pro Sound modded Game Boys for using LSDJ. And one of the things I'm most excited about the Analog Pocket, if it ever comes out, is the. Um, the inclusion of nano loop. So I do mess with chip tunes. Hey, Pat and Ian, hope you're doing well. It's Ryan out in Florida. Uh, I was just curious if there's any sort of sports games that you guys might, you know, desire that might not be as well known to American audience, you know, whether that's a sport like cricket or something along those lines. Anyways, love the show. Thanks. Well, I do have Australian rules footy on the NES. I think I do have that one, that pal one. I would love to see some more curling type games. I have a curling game for the DS, and I always thought it was pretty amusing. Do you swipe it on? Do you do that? Oh, that's brilliant. Yeah, you touch yeah. me like the broom. Um, I love watching. You know what? I watch curling a lot in the Winter Olympics. Yeah. yeah it's, it's coming fun. up in like five months. 
Is it really? Is the Winter Olympics this year? Yeah, because we remember oh, because we, of we the, skipped the, the year. delay. Holy shit! We're gonna have two Olympics in like seven months. I do actually like watching some of the Winter Olympics. I've mentioned this before. I like the ski jump, the curling. Um, I'm I, I, I would, like Winter Games though. Like I said, I, 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 the game itself is good. The port is fucking miserable. Sure. Um, but that actually leads me like that's the sort of stuff that I like seeing. I, I actually like Olympic style video games because you get these little bite sized mini game yes. style representations of all these sports that are never big enough to be covered elsewhere. So that's one thing I do pull from the Olympics that I like is the Olympic uh, the video games. Yeah, one of my favorite things, mini games. I, I the track and field two pole vault is outstanding. How that looks and plays, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, fun. We're never going to have a pole balling game just on its own. Like, you're never going to have that. Sure. There's, there's going to be a switch pole balling game. But yeah, that's it's a good point about that. God, I love track and field too more than I probably realize. It's a great game. Four and a half stars. And we have one more. Oh. I, I don't know who it's from, though. Who's calling? Who's it from? Hey, it's Tommy. Hey, what, what's up with the connection? Sounds like there's some kind of delay in my voice. What's up with that? Oh, Oh, is it because my amico is being delayed again? Oh, ha, 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 ha. Very funny. That's real cute, guys. Cut it out. Cut it out or hang it up right now. Hello? Ha, okay. Wow. I hate you guys so much. Anyway. With the way the market's going now, it looks like these amico physical products are going to be worth lots of money pretty soon. Especially since they're going to be in limited production. But, of course, Pat's got to be all negative about him. Like, I don't know what you can even fit. That's my Pat voice. What can you even fit in those boxes? And then Ian's like, why would you put out a special edition? That's my Ian voice. Why would you put out a special edition with no manual in it? I don't know, Ian. Let's see who's laughing when this stuff gets graded. <laughs> that, anyway, is funnier than is any right to be. What is that, anyway? I hate you guys so much. Anyway. That... <laughs> <laughs> that might make the soundboard. Anyway, <laughs> that might make the soundboard. That would be a good anyway. Segue. Yeah, that, is, that that would be a good segue button. That, I would actually be okay with that. I, I'm not kidding. Um, I I'm breaking the fourth wall. I I have to pre-screen all these. When I first heard that, anyway, I fucking died. I had, <laughs> I, I had to stop. That was the funniest thing. That delivery on that anyway, the timing it was, mwah, perfect. <laughs> 